I'm here with Dr. Erica Brown, who's the Division Director in our Harris County Public Health Department for the Community Health Division. I'm going to make brief remarks, and Dr. Brown will speak, um, and we'll take questions. After 25 months of fighting to slow the spread of COVID, we are seeing some positive news, and we have to acknowledge that. First, the COVID ICU and general populations are at their lowest point since May of 2020. And we should take a moment and take a breath and celebrate that. And so many of us are going back to normal in many ways, and that's warranted and important, and we need that as a community. We need that for our economy. That doesn't necessarily mean that the pandemic is completely over yet. And so that's something that we also must remember. For example, while the hospitalizations have come down, new cases now have stopped decreasing and are plateauing. What we've seen in the past in all the various waves we've had, they begin plateauing and then they go right back up. Not enough time has passed since the most recent wave in the winter to know if we're completely in the clear. We're watching uh, Western Europe, we're watching Asia. They're seeing those case increases. Um, they're seeing issues, some of these countries in their hospitals. And what remains to be seen here in Harris County is if and when we see the next wave, have enough people been vaccinated? Are there enough treatments? Are there enough therapeutics? to where our hospitals will be spared. And we, in the, the pandemic, or in that case, simply COVID, will become an inconvenience as opposed to something that taxes our hospitals. We just don't know the answer to that yet. But we can do our part to make sure that it is an inconvenience, in fact, that we move past this, that COVID as a taxing pandemic becomes a distant memory. And what we need to do for that is continue getting the vaccinations and the booster. And that's why we're here today. The FDA approved a second COVID vaccine booster for certain individuals last week. And many providers are offering it. And certainly our Harris County Public Health Department is offering the, the second booster at all of our vaccination sites. And we have various all throughout the community. Dr. Brown will go over who exactly is eligible. But in order to get the vaccine, the second booster, same process as always, you can visit readyharris.org. You can call 832-927-8787. It's available in various languages, that phone number. We prefer that you schedule an appointment, but you could show up as well. And when you show up, um, you'll be asked to attest that you qualify. Um, but if you qualify, please make sure and get the booster. And of course, if you've not gotten your vaccine or your first booster, please do your part and get that done. The booster is going to continue to protect us against upcoming variants. We've already seen a variant on Omicron. It's very much to be expected that there are gonna be other ones. And the best way to protect our community from filling up those hospital beds is by getting the booster. We know that these vaccines wane in efficiency after some time. We know that for folks who are immunocompromised and older, the impact is even worse. But the idea is if you get the vaccine, you might still get the virus, but you're very, very unlikely to end up in the hospitals, which is important for our community because we need those hospital beds. And the past few waves, we've ended up in a situation where we have to turn people away who are seeking care for routine medical issues, routine uh, hospitalization needs that we have to turn away because of COVID patients. We have yet to have a COVID wave in Harris County where our hospitals are not taxed. Just this last time, we had to bring around 500 nurses from out of town over uh, the fall in order to help our hospitals. So that's what we want to avoid, and that change is going to really mark the shift of COVID into something that is merely an inconvenience. So let's protect ourselves and our community, our families, it's well past time for everybody to get the vaccine, the booster. Now the second booster if you're eligible. We have more testing and treatment available than ever, but the vaccines are our strongest defense. And I hope that this community that has done so much to make sure we get through the pandemic will do their part on the second booster shot as well. Let me repeat briefly in Spanish and then I'll hand it over to Dr. Brown. Después de 25 meses en la lucha contra el COVID-19, nuestra comunidad 
tenemos hoy día buenas noticias y merecemos celebrar por un momento. Sé que muchos de nosotros estamos viviendo la vida más a la normalidad, eh, disfrutando, eh, relajándonos un poquito. Eso es importante, es bien merecido. Como comunidad lo necesitamos y como economía lo necesitamos. El número de, de hospitalizaciones, tanto en las UCI como en la población general de los hospitales, ha bajado al nivel más bajo desde mayo del 2020. O sea, unas noticias buenísimas. Ahora, no todo es positivo. Sí tenemos que tener un poco de, de precaución, porque en cuanto a los casos, ya estamos empezando a ver las indicaciones de lo que podría ser una nueva ola del COVID-19. Estamos viendo eh, que los casos eh, han dejado de, de reducirse y, y eh, de hecho han empezado a incrementar nuevamente. No ha pasado suficiente tiempo desde la última ola del COVID para saber qué podría ser el impacto, cuál podría ser el impacto de una nueva ola. Lo que sí sabemos es que en Europa y en Asia han habido esos incrementos en casos, especialmente en Asia se ven los impactos muy serios a los hospitales. Entonces, no hay manera de saber si en el condado Harris, cuando venga la próxima ola, si es que viene la próxima ola, que es casi seguro, cuál va a ser el impacto en nuestra población hospitalaria. Desde el principio del, del virus no hemos tenido una ola de covid que no haya impactado a nuestros hospitales hasta el punto en el cual tenemos que empezar a negarle atención a personas que necesitan hospitalizaciones para temas que suceden día a día, ataques al corazón, eh, paros cardíacos, este tipo de situaciones. Entonces, en, para poder llegar a, a la situación en la cual el COVID es simplemente una inconveniencia, no una tragedia, necesitamos asegurarnos que hay suficientes vacunaciones, que tenemos eh, suficientes tratamientos para que la próxima ola sea simplemente algo que es una molestia, pero que no eh, totalmente impacta y detiene la capacidad de nuestros hospitales. Eso lo podemos lograr como comunidad. Y la solución son las vacunas. La semana pasada, el gobierno federal aprobó el segundo refuerzo de la vacuna COVID-19. Y aquí en el condado Harris ya lo estamos ofreciendo. Entonces, puede hablar con su proveedor médico o venir al condado Harris, al Departamento de Salud Pública, y así recibir el segundo refuerzo. La doctora Brown hablará de quién califica para recibir ese, ese refuerzo, pero como saben, es gratis, no se pide identificación alguna, no se pide prueba de ciudadanía ni residencia, nada de eso. Puede registrarse en readyharris.org o puede llamar al 832-927-927. 8787 lo recibimos también en español. Este segundo refuerzo nos va a proteger contra las variantes que vienen. Ya inclusive hay una variante del de el, el Omicron. Esa variante es la, la mayoría de los casos en el condado Harris son ya de esa variante. Además, sabemos que van a venir más variantes, sabemos que las vacunas después de cierto tiempo no son tan eficaces, entonces por eso es importante el refuerzo. Y sabemos que especialmente, o bueno, todos nosotros, pero especialmente las personas mayores y las personas inmunocomprometidas, puede que les dé COVID, pero si tienen la vacuna, si tienen los refuerzos, es muy poco probable que terminen en el hospital, en la sala de emergencia, y es a eso a, a lo cual tenemos que llegar. Entonces, protejámonos como comunidad, hemos hecho muchísimo, somos muy fuertes, eh, muy persistentes, y ahora hay un pequeño esfuerzo más, y es ponerse este segundo refuerzo si es que califica. Invitaré ahora a la doctora Erica Brown a que explique la perspectiva de nuestro Departamento de Salud Pública. Dr. Brown. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. So those who are eligible to receive the second booster are anyone who is 50 years of age or older, anyone who is immunocompromised, and a booster is recommended for those who received the second dose of J&J &J vaccine. That booster is recommended to be either Pfizer or Moderna. And again, as Judge Hidalgo said, um, you can visit readyharris.org. Um, Harris County sites are open to walk-ins as well as any appointments, and you can also call 832-927-8787. Thank you. We'll take any questions. 
Uh, do we have any amount of vaccines for each of the properties, or how is the situation right now for the second booster? We have more than enough vaccine to make sure that anyone who wants the second booster can get it. And, and I do want to stress, we have seen people coming already to get the second booster at our sites. And so join them, join the community. It's something that we're seeing, we're getting questions about. So that's why we want to make sure everybody has the information. Uh, just, uh, I don't know if you're able yet to speak in Spanish to say, se ha reducido la cantidad de espacios que se tienen proporcionando vacunas en este momento y los horarios siguen siendo los mismos. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so uh, la, the question was about whether the number of sites have been reduced and, and the time, whether it's been the same. So maybe you can cover it in English and we'll cover it in Spanish. Sure, okay. sure. So the, the number of sites have not been reduced. Um, those sites that we are seeing um, a dwindling a need, a demand there, we have reduced the time. Um, but if we begin to see that there's more demand at those sites, we certainly will look at opening them back up. But throughout the county, we have sites that are available every day y hemos sido muy cuidadosos al respetar el hecho de que distintas personas tienen distintos horarios de trabajo, distintas responsabilidades. Entonces, aún hoy día nuestra sede de vacunación está disponible. Dependiendo de la sede, puede encontrar una sede que está disponible los siete días de la semana. Tenemos distintos horarios. Sí se ha reducido el horario en las sedes de vacunaciones donde hay menos eh, demanda, me, se, se, ha, se ha pedido menos la vacuna, pero a medida que veamos más personas eh, presentándose para recibir la vacuna, pues vamos a extender los horarios nuevamente. Aún tenemos sedes a lo largo de todo el condado Harris, entonces debe haber una sede cerca a usted. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.